We'll call this meeting to order. We'll begin the meet meeting with a moment of silence where you can pray, meditate, or just enjoy a moment of silence to yourself. So please join me in that. Thank you. If you'll join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Anybody signed up for public comment, but I'll open up the floor if anybody wishes to speak. Okay, seeing none. Moving on to item number one, the approval of the minutes or any corrections, additions, or deletions to the minutes presented. If not, is there a motion to approve the minutes as pre presented in your agenda packets? So moved. We have a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes say aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to updates from council, if there are any. No updates, okay. Moving on to the consent agenda. There's one item, tax brief fund releases. Are any questions? See none, if there's a, a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Uh, oh God. We all make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. <laughs> make a motion. We have a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item number four. We have an update on the Asheville Regional Airport. We have Mr. Blywise here. We appreciate you being here. And uh, as always, I see the airport's doing amazing things, always adding new flights. So I'm looking forward to hearing about that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, member, uh, members of town council. I appreciate you appreciate you letting me speak tonight, giving you our annual update. Uh, I've given to the town clerk a copy of those. We got them. Yes. Pass them out. Great. It's for your reading pleasure at some other time. Um, some of our 2022 stats uh, from an air service perspective: uh, we had uh, six carriers: uh, Allegiant, American, Delta, JetBlue, Sun Country, and United. Uh, serving 25 destinations out of Asheville. I'm not going to read all 25 destinations, but the new destinations that were added in 2022 was Austin, Texas, Miami, Florida, and Destin, Florida. Um, our passenger counts for the total uh, for 2022 was 1,838,793, which is up 29% over the previous year and up 13 and a half percent from 2019 which was our high water mark those passenger accounts now make Asheville regional airport the third largest and busiest commercial servicing airport in north carolina really following charlotte and raleigh we have surpassed greensboro so i'm going to ride that wave as long as possible i suspect when their business travel comes back we may you know uh, succeed to them but at this point uh, we're riding away as the third largest commercial service airport in North Carolina. Um, from a seat perspective on our airplanes, we had 1,116,623 seats in the market. That's up 12% from the previous year. Operations, we had airline operations, we had 26,874 in the course of 2022, which is up approximately 1%, so that's somewhat flat. Passenger numbers are up because the airlines are now putting in larger aircraft versus the old 50 seat regional jets that we used to see. From a general aviation and military perspective, we had 52,157 operations in the course of the year, and that was up 6.3%. In construction over the last year, uh, we updated our South General Aviation apron at a cost of approximately $5.5 million. Um, our, we moved as first phase of our uh, new terminal process, uh, our airfield electrical vault room, which was a cost of approximately $6.2 million. And we have started construction on the central energy plant, which would be the energy plant used for the new terminal building. That's approximately an $80 million contract, 40 of which is for construction of that central energy plant, 
and 40 million for long lead time items like batch and boarding bridges, bag, uh, baggage uh, conveyor systems, uh, and, uh, that, and HVAC equipment. Um, and then we also did the cell phone lot expansion and the north temporary parking lot, roughly $100 million for those two parking lots. From a community perspective, uh, we had our runway 5K again in the fall, had 1,000 runners. We raised approximately $20,000 net, and that $20,000 was split between AV Tech uh, Aviation Fund and the Western North Carolina Pilots Association Fund, uh, Foundation, benefiting pilots in our community to learn how to fly and move into that kind of career. Uh, local arts and musicians were back in the airport in 2022 after the hiatus from COVID. And we also created uh, what we call ADL Gives. It's a charity program from our employees. $7,000 was raised uh, that went to United Way and other type of charitable programs. We also participated in the, uh, in the United Way Backpack Program and various other holiday sponsorships in the course of 2022. Pause for passengers, it's our therapy dog going roaming the terminals uh, to create a, a, a calmer atmosphere for some of the uh, passengers. That also came back in 2022, and we also had Blue Ridge on our flights continue in 2022. From a financial perspective, our operating revenues were $19,889,480. Operating expenses were $10,480,000 with a net of $9,408,000. And the assets at the end of 21, or I'm sorry, at the end of 22, were $236,575,000. That's an increase of roughly $30.6 million over our assets in 2021. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you all may have, but that concludes my report. Sir. In the beginning of your report, did you say there were 52,000 military events? And general, avi general aviation and oh, all of them. Okay. That's yes. still a lot. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Are you expanding your uh, parking area? I noticed you cleared a lot of trees going down uh, we 280. Have, and yes, we are. Okay. Uh, the area to the south, just past the uh, Triangle Stop and Dunkin' mm -hmm. Donuts, that's in uh, phase for construction for a 650 space surface parking lot. It'll be shuttled back and forth to the terminal building. If you notice the north area if you're coming off I-26 and you look over, you can see a lot more of the airport today. We took a lot of trees down on that area. That was due to tree obstruction for the FAA radar. Mm -hmm. We were getting a lot of kickback images from the trees uh, and their growth. So because of FAA safety, we, we, we took all those trees down also. That will be future development, but that's down the road some point. With that many parking spots, it looks like you, the revenue should be coming in. Was it 39% of your revenues from parking? That is so, correct. Yeah. Parking is always an airport's biggest revenue source, and so yes, we'll be adding that. We, we're trying to fit parking now as cars come in, as all the nooks and crannies when we fill up our parking lots. This surface lot will serve two things. One, it will add to our capacity overall, but number two is about three years from now, hopefully we're going to be able to start and afford a second parking garage. All the surface spaces where the garage are now, or where the garage will go, will have to be displaced so we can build the garage, and that hopefully that 650 space lot will help offset that offset yeah. that in that construction site. Yes, sir. Thank you. We've had some concerns from citizens about uh, sidewalks going from the airport down towards towards the area of Fanning Bridge Road. When they put in that new parking lot, are they going to put in better sidewalks? I don't know. A lot of that is in the state right of ways, or you know, up, up, up against our property. I don't have an answer for you, but I can check and see if we're going to do that. I, I know that the, the individual was saying that if, if you wanted to, to walk from the airport down to like where that Dunkin' Donuts or something is, there were not sidewalks to walk, and they had to walk in the road. That I can answer. Yes, we put in the parking lot that's down that's south. Of, yes, there will be a sidewalk, continuous sidewalk from the parking lot, Dunkin' Donuts, trying to stop all over the front of the Yes, there will be. Thank you. Because there are people that will decide to walk versus hop on a shuttle. So yes, we will be improving. I thought you meant on on the uh, I two or um, on the uh, two eighty side. Of the oh, okay, no, side no, is what I thought you meant. So yes, we yeah. have those sidewalks. Good. Those financials that you just wrote, uh, just reviewed, are those available? They are. We audit every year and they are available on our website.
website. Okay. If you're interested in it, we can send them directly to you, but they are available to the public on our website. Okay, thank you. Do we have any other questions or comments? I know, I was, I've noticed, well, like today when I was out there playing golf, there's an awful lot of private aircraft flying in here. There must be an awful lot of money coming to Asheville. That adds into that 52,000 of operations that you see during course. I mean, these small jets are just yeah. choom, choom, choom. Yeah, must be. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Do we have any other questions, comments? How is it, how are the flights doing now? I, I know um, several months ago, uh, some different people were had flights out from JetBlue canceled last moment, five o'clock in the morning, no, no recourse, no, except for here's your money and they're just out. Um, um, how's the flights going on for well, all the airlines? Well, really? all carriers across the country, they all have financial issues. So they Absolutely. choose which ones they may have to cancel. Uh, if they cancel one, it's usually one they'll cancel because there's a repetitive flight that, that same day or within the next day or so. Um, but the flight reliability over the last several months has, has gotten better from that, from that issue. That's good. And that looks like all the questions and comments we have, I think, this time. And we thank you for all the work that you're doing in our community and all this growth that's exciting to see. Great. Thank you for being a great partner with us, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank all you. Right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Blue. All righty. Moving on to item number five, the approval of the stormwater design change for the multi-court project at Gilmore Community Park. Mr. Manager. Okay, thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, so last week you heard from uh, Ben Cathy with McGill Associates to talk to you about uh, a stormwater improvement change, basically on the south side of the courts, kind of south east corner, if you will, and you've got a copy in the revised packet of that sketch or layout. Mm -hmm. um, and this change came about based on feedback that we got at the pre-construction conference uh, with the contractor and the sub. They tried to redo the plane or make it one solid plane for drainage, and as a result of this and further tweaking of the um, uh, site it led to this recommendation for the drainage improvement I when you, when we discussed this last week we talked about doing a budget amendment I, I was talking that this over with our finance officer assistant manager Heather and based on this being it's going to run into two fiscal years to finish the, the project it's I think it's a hundred days we have programmed in um, I, I'd recommend it if you can give us approval, it's about $10,000 to do this. It adds costs. We're going to get some credits for some of the fencing that's coming off. Um, but if you can give authorization to do this, we'll get the project further underway. Um, we'll know at the end if there's any other unforeseen, and then if we need to, at the back end of this, come uh, back with a budget amendment to approve any additional appropriations that are needed for the project. So um, no other changes from what you heard last week. You've got the layout. And, and the only other design change on the courts themselves, you heard last week um, you, know, you had a discussion about the layout of the basketball court. Mm -hmm. And so instead of the two half courts back to back and then additional backboards on the um, sides, there was, um, or on the ends, one redesigned for a smaller full court and then one half court. So if you all are comfortable with that, we'll go forward. But if I can just get, I guess, a motion to approve those changes. The design changes? Yes. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, do we have any questions or comments before the motion? All right, is there a motion to approve the stormwater design changes for the multi-court project at Billmore Community Park? So moved. Okay, we have a motion to approve those changes. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the changes say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. 
All right, moving on to item number six, the summer report on the citizen survey conducted by poll code. Uh, we went through a little bit of the data last week, but now we have some written data that so we're going to go through maybe a, a little bit. And the floor is yours, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, so last week I kind of gave you an overview um, based on highlights of the results of the uh, survey. And it's a long report, so that's why I did this memo to kind of hit the highlights, if you will. Um, it doesn't take the place of reading the whole survey, but it, it's a lot to go through um, at 80-some pages. So trying to kind of pull that and, and hit the high notes. Um, so we started the process actually late last fall. Um, we executed a contract. Um, and, and again, and just back up a little bit, the reason that we went into this was to try and um, improve engagement efforts with the public and give an opportunity for the public to give feedback on what's important and also kind of um, evaluating the quality of some of the services we do provide. Um, and some of these things that are evaluated aren't things that we do, but it's good to have this feedback anyways, and we of course can share this with other agencies. So it's looking at importance and kind of quality of what's being provided. Uh, and there was 10 <coughs> facets that it evaluated again, economy, mobility, community design, utilities, safety, natural environment, parks and recreation, health and wellness, education, arts and culture, and inclusivity and engagement. So um, going through those things, uh, the survey went out in January, it was sent out by postcard, and we sent it to all our households. Um, it says a sampling, because they normally do uh, a, a statistical sampling. They don't do all the households, but our household numbers were low enough relative to their um, clients that they normally deal with, Polco, um, that we sent it to everybody. So we did the initial postcard, uh, followed that up with the written copy of the survey if they wanted to, to do that and mail it in and then we did an open participation period and we we advertised this you know on Facebook our website we did the blackboard calls so we tried to really get the word out and we had a decent response rate I mean it was 20% you know of course you always hope for better but um, it's a long survey you know it did take some time and effort to go through that um, we did have an open kind of question or open narrative, just general feedback, other feedback or comments. Um, and I've got a copy of that out, hard copy, and I emailed it to you all as well, um, which provides some interesting comments, I think, on there. It's, it's, um, so please take some time to read through those. It's, it's, it wasn't a ton, but um, it, it's interesting feedback and suggestions. So, um, you know, it confirms some of the stuff that we're working on his priorities and, and then points out other things you just don't think of, which is kind of neat doing an engagement um, process like this because people, you know, they'll, they'll come up with interesting um, creative comments and suggestions. So uh, the demographics was a little bit older demographic of the highest percentage of people who uh, replied at 64% were 55 plus. 94% uh, who responded were homeowners versus renters, 76 were lived in detached housing, so like single family homes. Um, the racial breakdown, um, and this is just white, non-white, 89% of people responded were white versus 11% non-white, which is pretty representative of our uh, racial breakdown demographically. Uh, more female respondents than males um, at 62 versus 38 percent males who responded. Um, and then kind of hitting some of the highlights of livability or what people perceived as high quality of what's being done. Um, an overall feeling of safety rated at 83 percent. So that's 83 percent of people saying um, very good or excellent. Uh, overall quality of parks and recreation opportunities at 83%. Overall quality of utility infrastructure at 72%. And overall economic health at 
And then some things that um, didn't rank as high on that, on the quality, uh, overall quality of transportation system uh, at 32%, which is not a big surprise. We don't have, um, you know, particularly good public transit here, or at least widespread. And then, of course, some of our traffic challenges here. Um, and then overall opportunities for education, culture, and the arts was at 37%. So the, these were ranked lower as compared to their benchmark communities. So Polko does this, a similar survey to this across a lot of parts of the U.S. to local governments. Um, and then as far as what's important, you know, versus just quality, what was ranked high of importance, um, quality of utility infrastructure at 94 percent so that was pretty high um, the overall feeling of safety at 91 percent overall economic health at 89 percent overall quality of parks and recreation opportunities at 86 percent and then overall design layout of residential and commercial areas at 85 percent um, so you, if you talk about areas that are ranked high of quality of service and what's high importance, it's kind of interesting to overlap. So hopefully what people deem is important, you're doing well. Um, if you look at page six of the report, but I've got highlights of it in this um, long memo that I've read, had written. Um, but on page six of the full copy of the report, there's a diagram and it kind of overlaps the importance and quality. And so um, I think it's interesting to know what people rank as very important and high quality. Um, parks and recreation fell into that. Safety, the natural environment, utilities, and economy. And then some things that rank lower that were high importance, but lower on the quality, um, community design and mobility. Um, so just some interesting things to point out as they overlap. Um, other key findings in there, you know, the quality of life is ranked very high here. Um, overall experience for high quality of life and strong sense of safety. 90% um, of residents gave Fletcher an excellent or good rating as as far as a place to live, 83% of the residents gave a high rating um, of excellent or good for their feeling of being safe, um, which is, I, I think, a good complement to our um, police, fire, and EMS services. Um, some other things that ranked high in there and key findings, uh, natural environment was ranked at 73% as being good or excellent and parks and rec opportunities. I, I, I know I mentioned some of those things earlier, but they just, they point that out again as key findings. And then three areas, which I thought were interesting, that are services that Fletcher provides that were ranked higher than the national benchmark was yard waste pickups. I mentioned this, so that's your, um, you know, brush pickup services here. Uh, recycling services, and then um, the quality of our town parks uh, ranked much higher than the benchmark. And then, you know, we did some custom questions that were relative to particular issues here. Uh, and one of those talked about um, getting people to rank the importance of our greenway trails or the interest in expanding our greenway trails. So 94% um, of residents supported uh, proposed development of additional Greenway trails from the big park, the Warren Community Park, to Meritor property. And then 89% of residents supported that, extending that out even further. So additional Greenway trails that would connect outside our town limits to the larger regional network of Greenways. Um, and that, you know, that's consistent with past survey work that we've done um, at the park. Um, the economy um, was an area of focus, a high area of focus. So nine in 10 residents indicated the economy was essential and very important to the community to focus on in the next two years. Um, within that, as far as 
commercial opportunities, commercial development here. But I was interested to know so only four in ten participants rated Fletcher's variety of businesses as excellent or good, which then gets at to the you know, need or town's efforts, I guess, um, marrying up with the work on the downtown. So, because um, that uh, four in ten was lower than the national benchmark. Um, some other things relative to downtown development within the custom questions. Uh, they the residents ranked, and these are the uh, highest of importance for types of businesses identified as the biggest priorities. So our, our dine-in restaurants, bars, 73%. Uh, health services such as doctor's office, hospitals, dentists, 68%. Which is interesting, I think, in there because we don't have a lot of professional services offices in town, and medical services is continuing to be um, something that's high demand, especially with the aging of the population. You know, we're a little bit younger demographic here as compared to the rest of Henderson County, but that's almost being evaluated like a source of infrastructure as your medical services and facilities. But they have. Put a couple in town that have ended up closing. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean the the one in, down here that started out as a medical practice affiliated with Park Ridge. Oh yeah, the one that's in and Park. then didn't the one down here across from the school switch hands or something? Yeah, that was a primary care. You're talking next to CVS. Yeah, yes. yeah, that had switched hands. But then you also got. The mission party yeah, right on the border, right there. We got another ambulatory service or ambulatory um, uh, surgery center you know, over. Um, oh yeah, by the yeah. airport there, where um, back with Jane S. And so, and we we get inquiries about things like that too. You know, Eric deals with it. So it's kind of an interesting demand or or of interest. Um, so arts and entertainment was the next at 55%, and then maintenance, repair, construction services, 51%, and hardware and home goods at 44. So just to give you know what's important for downtown um, commercial opportunities, people think that uh, maybe you're missing here or something we need to focus on. And, are things that are consistent with what we're trying to do with the town center project and the town's property. Um, and then, at, you know, just some concluding thoughts. I know we had some we had some discussion last week about this, but yeah, I, I thought the survey overall, and I, I hope you all would find that too, provided some good feedback on what we're doing well and some areas that, you know, we can improve on. Um, I, I also would mention, I, I think, you know, discontinued engagement in ways that we can better engage the community. We, of course, this was an opportunity, but, you know, it's, I don't want to say it's static, but it's, you know, you, you do this, and then what do you do to follow up with mm -hmm. it, which is kind of why I wanted to get in a little bit of a discussion. Um, Y'all had some good feedback last week about um, doing some maybe smaller uh, meetings with the public or you know, some type of like engagement efforts like similar to what Hendersonville was doing. Um, so you know we'll, we'll look into some of those um, ways we might want to structure something like that and it gives more opportunities here for the public on what's going on, what's important, what's not important. Um, you know we'll, we'll have our uh, Matthew Horton, our IT person, is working on some finishing touches. I think this week he's doing that so we can get our equipment, so we got some new equipment installed here so we can be airing the meetings live and then having them recorded and uploaded to a YouTube channel. Um, so, you know, that's an important thing. Uh, and then, you know, I mentioned about you know, doing this study again or the survey some years down. I think y'all mentioned maybe over four or five years. So we can plan then to do that next. Um, so this is just some high level um, overview. And, you know, please go through the survey again and, and 
if you see other things you want to talk about or you think are important, um, you know, we can share with what we're hearing from the community about it. Um, there hasn't been a lot of feedback since it's been, you know, the results posted. I think people are interested to know what came out. Um, the narrative, I thought, was really interesting. Narrative comments, and you know, hopefully, you know, we do this again in the next four or five years. Make sure that gets pushed out real hard at the, you know, beginning that there is an, another opportunity to say something else um, rather than just, you know, rating the facets there um, in the survey. So, I don't know if you had any other comments, or I, I know you discussed it a fair amount of length last week. For myself, I, I love the narratives. Uh, but actually, to me, that's citizens speaking to directly to us. Yeah. And it comes out with some great stuff. And you know, they throw out some even some ideas out there that maybe we're not looking at, and some else and other you know, thoughts and stuff. So these narratives, good, bad, and ugly, you know, I, I, I love them. I think we should get more of these. You know, and, and it shows that people are um, love Fletcher and they want to see the Fletcher grow and. It gives you some ideas and what, what their thoughts are. So. I noticed every single one of those who was listed is anonymous. I think it's purposely, I, I, I don't was know. That the way I don't, it was I don't know. I, I'd have to ask them, but I think it just automatically. Okay. Went, I, I or maybe every that. one of them did. That's automatically anonymous. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so okay. That was what I took from that. Um, I know they try and set up the survey as much as possible when you're responding that it's anonymous. I mean, it, you know, we're trying to verify the Fletcher residents, obviously the mailing and that, but just so people feel comfortable, you know, particularly if they have something really critical in there yeah. and you're not, oh, you know. I agree with Trevor. I, I, I like that part almost as much as the other part. I did, yeah, I got more out of this little piece right here. But the other part has its place too. It has some, it has some points yeah. in there, yeah. But the, I, this is the part I really enjoyed favorite. reading the narrative. In fact, I'm gonna make sure, it's like, obviously shared the results with staff, with department heads, yeah. but I want to make sure they see and read all the narrative comments too, because it's, you know, it's good to reinforce some things, but also get you thinking about other things that are important or someone pointing out something that you weren't aware of. Especially uh, the planning board has a lot of stuff it talks about here about new developments to the, yeah. uh, put more restrictions on the developer, but making it uh, landscape uh, more, Hence the landscape by a percentage more and stuff like that. It has a lot of good stuff in here. Yeah. So I'd definitely share it with the planning board. I'm just yeah, curious as to who, who's in love with Preston. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to mention. <laughs> I was going to mention. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought that the narrative was really good as well. Uh, the only thing I was going to say is that I think I guess we kind of talked about this last week, but just having a way to communicate with the citizenry about some of the items that are in here, there's a lot of stuff we're aware of and we've been working on it. Mm -hmm. And there are some things that are just outside of our jurisdiction right. that we can advocate, but uh, it might be helpful to be able to communicate at some point mm -hmm. in the future what we've already been doing or what we can or can't do, or et cetera. Yeah. It could be, you know, a paragraph at a time or something on a Facebook page. Yeah. We try and do, but that's a good point. You know, clarify some things with like the Facebook posts because you know, people just don't know how yeah. certain things happen or how they're done. And um, so, well, I, I see a lot of issues brought up on uh, these uh, internet neighborhood type things, mm -hmm. but I've been somewhat leery about responding to anything because as soon as you do, somebody is going to take it wrong and, and the, the thing will be blown out of proportion before you get very far. Are you talking about like social media? Yeah, that's what oh, uh, next, door. Door. next door neighborhood or whatever. Yeah, it's, um, it's a double-edged sword because you could <laughs> clarify something, but it also can come back and um, I don't know what, sometimes if it spins out of, to yeah. uh, adversarial or argumentative or whatever the word you want to use for it. Um, but, uh, you know, Mark, you, you brought up a, or somebody about maybe responding to some of this stuff on social media. It might be cool to 
you know, particular take a particular subject that kind of overlaps and maybe so oh, something. Put like one a month in the newsletter. Yeah, that's what I was going to yeah. mention in the newsletter or social media. Yeah. yeah. Yep, that's good. That might be an easy um, way to re engage the public, kind of let them know yeah. what's already yeah. Like Christine was saying, so so Susan Hafner in our office, as you know, looks on the London um, newsletter. newsletter. Yeah. They'll, um, every month, she'll take uh, the agenda and then, like, my manager comments and right. things from that and just for ideas, mm -hmm. for updates, articles. Um, so, yeah, that's a good. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can unpack maybe a little bit of some of the highlights from the survey. Sure. Yeah. Maybe I mean, I, I think one stuff. thing that, that residents would like is if, if we could summarize some of the projects going on in town that, that they see land being cleared or something and they don't know what it is. Yeah. You know, I'm always yeah. getting people asking, oh, what is that yeah, piece of property there yeah. being cleared mm -hmm. for? And that kind of stuff, we could put a, you know, a little paragraph on Facebook explaining some of this stuff. Yep. Okay. Just jotting some notes here. Marie, that's a good thought. Yeah. All right, do we have any other thoughts or comments, questions on that item? All righty. I know you're taking notes, Mr. Manager. Yeah, It'll take you time. Uh, I'm good. We'll move on to item number seven, the update on the development of a traffic calming policy. And that's back on you, Mr. Manager. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as I said last week, this so this is a follow-up item to a month or so ago. We had um, had, particularly in response to some requests coming from uh, Windsor Forest neighborhood, but we're also getting, you know, Requests from South Chase, from uh, Presley Hill Road, through farms, yeah. farms about um, you know, checking out speeding or cut through traffic, and so um, one of the things we had discussed, and I'm I'm still doing research on it. I've, I've found an old policy that I don't think was ever adopted because we don't see any record of that. It. it was before my time, and I've been here 17 years. Um, where McGill had worked on the structure of one. So I, I've gone through that, and I'm looking at some other sample um, uh, traffic calming policies from other municipalities like Asheville, Hickory, Indian Trail is another one. So I, I want to come back and recommend a new policy on this and have you like, adopt it or um, approve it as a policy you want to use. and. I'm sure you want to tweak it at some point, but um, my goal is in June to have something back before you and um, probably build on some facets on the draft one that McGill had done. It's got some good elements. Um, and, and basically, you know, the traffic common policy is it gives a process for you to receive and staff requests or inquiries about people wanting speed table or speed hump or reducing the speed in the neighborhood or it dealing with cut through traffic or whatever it may be and then the public has an opportunity to bring that request there's some initial review analysis with staff looking at the issue and then if it elevates and needs more attention a petition where you get a certain number of residents that sign on and then you look at some other more um, active improvements, which you get into signage, you know, speed trailers, speed tables, you know, hard like physical improvements like adjusting roads, road alignment, things like that. Um, and then prioritizing those things and doing like a point score to try and determine um, does it merit doing these things, or um, is it just more enforcement efforts, some other minor? So um, I'll do that. I also wanted to let you know um, another kind of follow-up from the traffic calming discussion and other improvements. Um, so our police chief and our public works director have been 
researching and coming up with some recommendations for some speed trailer purchase so it won't be mobile and we could be capturing data and putting that around. Um, so hope they get finalized and something soon and say how we want to address purchasing something like that. We might be able to do it with our Powell Bill funds. I'm trying to get some clarification on that. Our Powell Bill, you know, is for our street maintenance, construction, and town maintained roads. So um, so that's in play. Uh, just a moment. I'll let you know that it's still moving forward. Mm -hmm. so, um, and that's all I had on that, unless there's any questions. Any questions or comments? All righty, moving on to item number eight, your comments, Mr. Manager. Thank you. Uh, the budget, so that's probably just pressing on people's minds is what's going to happen here with the tax rate, et cetera. So, um, you know, we've got our budget. We used to call it a budget retreat. I guess now it's really an all-day budget workshop. But hopefully not all day, but then you know, quickly it goes. Um, so I'll be presenting the recommended budget to you um, Wednesday morning, um, starting at 9. We're going to meet in, in here. I don't think we've, I think it's the first time we've presented the recommended budget in council chambers. We've always been doing it in smaller rooms, like the multi-purpose room upstairs or the conference room. Um, but we're going to do that in here. I'll have a PowerPoint presentation as in years past. Um, so you'll hear, you know, the rate recommendation, and it's it's close to revenue neutral, not right at it, um, but very close. And really, kind of the only thing hanging out there right now is the uh, fire tax rate, and what we don't know what the uh, commissioners that are going to recommend for the fire tax districts. Um, we're our contract language is a little fuzzy on that, as as it as we determine we um, the fire tax portion for Fletcher Fire and Rescue. Um, we can't go lower than nine and a half cents for our contract, but um, and the fire departments they presented their budgets to the uh, Fire and Rescue Advisory Council. Then it goes back before the commissioners in the middle of this month and they, it's at that point that we have a better idea of what rate they're going to be looking at for the fire tax districts. So um, that's really kind of the only thing that's hanging out there, so to speak. And the, the only other change, um, and I, ta I talked to you all about lowering some of the amount of the tax rate that's designated for capital improvement plan or annual capital budget. It's, that's out of the CIP um, from eight and a half cents down to seven and a half. I've plugged in seven cents on there. So it still more than covers our plan projects on debt service and on the cash side. Um, but it, it helps in re, you know, readjusting the resources that we have to cover all the services that we cover in addition to contracting for fire protection services. So, so you'll hear more about that on Wednesday. Um, we'll have our um, breakfast if you want to meet at Costa's at, at 8. So if you can please let Christine know if you haven't already who's going to be able to be there at um, 8 Wednesday morning. And then we'll start back over here at 9 for the meeting. Is it possible to meet upstairs or is it just too much trouble? I we can go upstairs, I, I, or is it, no one's using it up there, are they? I don't know, I'd have to look at the, the calendar. I, I, I'm not sure if they're, I don't know if the Blue Ridge is done or not. I need to look. I think they are, but I'm not sure. Okay, so if it's open, yeah, we can shift upstairs. And Do anyone else have any thoughts no about that? There's no logistical issue. You mean where we can sit around a table more and stuff? So yeah, if it's possible. I like it when we're kind of U-shaped facing each other yeah. a little bit. And have and a table to spread out. Right now, but once we start the video system, it would probably be better if we need it here so that it, all that, because we don't have that equipment up there. So yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, what, what, what We've that got the uh, AV equipment up there. No, I'm talking about recording. Oh, oh. There's no way to record it. Okay. 
That's right. Well, that's it's down the road when we when we're all finally hooked up. That won't be done on Wednesday, will it? I assume not the uh, no, upgrades no, 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 Matthew's working on But we had that but we had that before when we met the other time? Yeah, I'm just talking about the new recording system. Oh, okay. I mean, so right now there's the audio, audio of the recording of the meeting. Yeah. Um, did we did we can't do up there other than I mean, if you do a tape recorder. I've got but I can get any zones recorded. Okay. See if I can get okay. Yeah, I'm just talking about once the video gets in play. Okay. So if there's no, we can shift up there if there's no other conflicts with the use of the room. So I don't know why there's any objection. Okay. Yeah. So maybe next year. <laughs> Do what? I said so. maybe next year in here. I'm just kidding. Um, so, okay. Uh, unless there's any other questions on the budget update, uh, the next, the I've already covered pretty much your tennis, basketball, football, courts project update um, with those changes. Just on the other comments on it, it's underway. They're really doing mostly the stormwater improvement work right now. You can see it's court, it's uh, sectioned off and they're starting to do some of the site work right there. So that's moving forward. Um, I mentioned the actuated flasher out at um, the signal at Cooper's Creek Road in Wildbriar. So this is the entrance there at the Cove on the uh, um, Cooper's Creek Road side. It's active now. Good. It's imminent, but it's live. So it, that's working. Um, so happy to report that that's up and hopefully that'll improve traffic safety in that neighborhood for people on Hooper's Creek and people coming and going from um, the Cove at Livingston Farms. So, uh, last week I mentioned something about, a, uh, I call it actuated flasher, they got a really fancy name for it, um, for a crosswalk. Um, and this is uh, on Howard Gap Road near the Fernley Charter School. Um, it's called a rectangular rapid flashing beacon, but, but you know, basically it's one of these crosswalks where if you're coming up and using it, I, I think you have to hit the button on there or a button. It has the flashing lights that, you know, let somebody know that um, the vehicles that someone's entering the crosswalk and to stop. Um, and they seem to work well. I know that, you know, there's one down by, um, on Howard Gap near the Fletcher Academy. And um, so I've had some conversation with Michael Luplow about this, and I mentioned this last week, and the schools um, are, basically the schools are being required to pay for these where they want them. DOT doesn't have funding designated. Uh, it's about, it could be, I'm sure, at least 22,000. You give me an estimate, a little bit less than that. Um, and he threw out the idea of a cost share. And uh, the reason is, of course, we have our residents crossing there, not just people using the crosswalk to um, go to the school, but there's our patrons. But the other bigger thing is if we're going to extend the Greenway Trail, that's going to be our cross, our most likely crossing, or, or at least the preliminary design is at that crosswalk. So to have a, you know, upgraded safety wise um, crosswalk that would be important um, now when so, you cross over there are there sidewalks on the other side or something yeah there is okay. a sidewalk so, on the other side and then what will happen then with the greenway extension is it would continue and then it would go kind of parallel to the creek or it will go parallel to the creek you know then extend down and go underneath the uh, uh, Highway 25 bridge over um, King Creek, and then come up and either up and around down the road and across, or a bridge across there. So, um, anyway, so he's going to come back with the request probably this summer to talk about it. I just said it's kind of late in the budget process to try and be adding something like that. You know, unless you all want to add it um, for discussion before you get to adopting the budget. 
If they get a, like a, even a, a more of a solid price too, that's kind of. Um, well, he got he got a price from them. It was like twenty one so thousand six six hundred. So I just rounded it okay. up to twenty two. I mean, it, I doubt it's going to be drastically more than that. It, let's just say you funded it and we got it in process. I, I don't think it's going to be significantly more than that. And I, you know, he was talking. I, I, I guess assumption, but we let iron that out. I, I saw him the other day. He just um, buy there for a lunch thing. Um, maybe a 50-50 cost share on it. Now, what does the walkway go? It goes across the street, but it's it's just to the school. There's nothing else over there. We're not using it for parking or RV or. No, we we have used some of their parking for overflow events, like a like concert. The yeah, like the uh, yeah concert in the park. That's not quite as big, but um, like the, that Fletcher Family Festival in the fall, you know, in September, Christmas in the park, which get much bigger. So they do. We do cooperate with them, or they, you know, use parking over there. So I, I think you can from their walk. It might go off the sidewalk. I'm just curious why Fletcher residents would want to cross there to get. Well, you've got right the, now. You've I mean, got, I know later will be a greenway, but right now. Right, now. right. I mean, it's mostly. Um, it would be parents like leaving the groves at town center that might walk their kids across the street. Yeah, right now the majority of use is tied to the school, yeah, but we, I mean, we know that in the future yeah. we're going to have a skin in the game too with the Greenwood. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think um, I understand what, what Keith means because um, I don't know if even 40 percent of the Popu student population is Fletcher anyway, but I understand it's an issue right there. I, I like to maintain a relationship or build a relationship at least for serious about the Greenway. Yeah, it's yeah. been it's been my understanding, our perception of the council. We've been pretty serious about it, and I I'll say that I, I drive it every day on my way to work in the morning, and it's. It's a little testy there. I'll say that, and I don't think I would sleep well knowing. People walking across there right there is testy? Well, yeah, and, and children specifically. And I, I certainly see children crossing each each morning, each afternoon, uh, when I'm going to and from work or home. So I, I, I do understand the issue, and I would like to maintain that relationship with Fernleaf. So I say I'm not particularly opposed to it at yeah. this moment, but I'd certainly like to hear more. I also shared the um, resident stopped by and, and shared an email to the um, traffic engineer uh, about lowering the speed limit, uh, making it a school zone uh, where it's lower, you know, different times of day, or just lower it to 25 as you come across the bridge, you know, coming into our town limits there. Um, that makes sense. I mean, the school there yeah. should yeah, be a school zone. The the so, so, so does a school zone not exist right now? No, yeah, I guess there's no, I didn't realize it, and I thought it was, but the, um, it's kind so of, it, it's, uh, um, and, you know, it's 40 miles an hour coming into town, mm -hmm. and then it drops to 35. But some folks are really trucking coming in there, uh, even past the, if you just got a small stretch, so if you're going to drop it, you'll just do it not past that bridge. Yeah. All the way to 25. All the way to 25. Yeah. Because yeah. it's just, um, yeah. I'd say, where would be a school center? Mm -hmm. It should be. Isn't it yeah. at 20 or 25 in front of Fletcher Elementary anyway? Yeah. No, it's, it's 35, 35 all the way through. It's 35, yeah. So is there anything that but we need to do? Of course, there's a red mark there. Well, I'm sorry. No, no, I was just go ahead. I mean, thinking out loud. I mean, we can, yeah. we can make a request to. Um, DOT to consider that. I mean, I, 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 I was going to have some more, I don't think our police department would be opposed to that, but I, I was going to have a little more discussion with our police chief and, you know, public works directors and Dan and Jello about that. But, um, and, you know, school zones, hey, that's hard to enforce, too, you know, because then you got to have police out there right when that school zone time is, you know, it's that block of time in the afternoon and morning when you're supposed to be slowing down to 25. I don't know how good people do that really, even down 
by uh, Fletcher Elementary, which is outside our jurisdiction. So it's really, you know, the Sheriff's Department is supposed to be enforcing that, or Highway Patrol. So if you want us to engage in a discussion with DOT just about um, entertaining lowering the speed of in there, we can do that or at least start looking at it. I don't yeah, want to oh, jump yeah. to a conclusion on it. But, yeah. um, it's not that long of a stretch of road. It's oh, not going to inconvenience anybody that much. Okay. There's more to gain. Sorry, uh, I'll know. Another issue, Mark, mm -hmm. I, and I apologize if you've already responded, but I couldn't remember. Have, has uh, Eric looked into any restrictions on those uh, bit farms? No. Is he uh, looking into it? Or are we going to wait until we get one and then have to deal with it? Uh, we just haven't gotten any further. I saw since Henderson you, County put a moratorium on them in, 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 in the county, county, but I'm not sure that would apply to us. It's like Buncom was looking at doing that. But they yeah, Buncom, did. Buncom put a moratorium quite a while ago, I think. Yeah. But Henderson County has. I think I saw it on the news that they did. Boy, I, I missed these uh, bit farms. What exactly? They come in oh, and put these giant. It, it's just a block kind of building with computers in it. But from what I've heard, they're crazy noisy and they run 24 hours a day. So anybody that lives anywhere near it's going to have an issue. So they've got a bunch of them over over towards Waynesville area mm -hmm. there. People are really complaining about it. like a building with like a bunch of servers. Yeah, a bunch of servers in it that are, that are really loud. They, they call it Bitcoin mining, and it's it's, oh, it's yeah, basically yeah. Like okay. It's I see. Warehouse. It's, it's, it's a really it's hard to wrap your brain around, but they basically got these computers that are running all these computations, mathematical, and it I, I don't know. It's like almost gambling of trying to guess these numbers that they get attach a value and you get these Bitcoin and yeah the virtual uh, currency yeah the virtual currency um, and I think it's some places it's a noisy thing yeah you know, some other I, I mean just some casual conversation Eric actually was doing some checking around about that so I didn't he didn't have a suggestion right away for more. He'll be prepared for that, I should say. But kind of felt in Buncombe County was a little bit of an e-jerk on it as far as kind of how quickly they were going to do a moratorium on it. But um, Well, I mean, I, if, if you look at the, the TV reports from the ones yeah. that they did build, people quite a ways away are really upset. But they're also in much more rural areas, which are more hard pressed to use to find something to lease like that. We have a hard time leasing spaces while we have more land uses here. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we can. And you can at least have a discussion, I guess, with, with the planning board on it. Like I said, I, I think I saw in the news that Hendersonville or Henderson County put a moratorium. But I'm not sure whether that would cover us or not. Maybe not. Yeah. Uh, it might not because, I mean, I mean, you could make an interpretation because we're all under, but generally for land use regulations, they're separate. We're separate. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we are distinctly separate. So, um, okay. I'll follow up with Eric on that. Um, I, you know, I mentioned last week, change the subject here to the town center and the traffic impact analysis. You know, we got our mitigation recommendation from DOT. Will Bowie, who is representing our former developer, they weren't um, too concerned with the mitigation requirements. Their biggest um, issue they wanted to get more data on, and they're having Madden and Craig, that's a traffic consulting firm run some data on how many um, are left turn ins to their other stores because the way it's restricted in the TIA here, it would only be right in, right out from basically where depot street right. is. So they're doing that. I haven't got 
the results yet, or if they finished it, and then we want to sit down. How much? What does that really mean? And can we get back to hopefully negotiating a new agreement, and knowing what the you know, mitigation improvements? I don't know how much that's going to cost. I don't know how the rest of you feel, but. I would feel comfortable if next time you saw them, you tell them that we're getting a little impatient. I mean, they've been dragging this thing out for a long time now. You know, we could go over and reappraise that property and, and come up with a total different value. It, it, it's been sitting there for so long. Did they say how long that uh, traffic study I'm, is? I'm thinking it's going to be any day now or which within a week or so we should have something back. It didn't seem like it was going to take a long time to put that together. So we address it again next month and like I said. And, I, and Magnolia Properties is still monitoring this closely because I get some inquiries from them. Um, they, you know, they took kind of everything where we're at and more detailed information about the conditions of the property and but haven't come back with a proposal. They're getting ready to do a sign. Um, so, you know, Magnolia Properties is the one doing the food hall there oh, okay. um, uh, near the intersection of 25 and Fanning Bridge, so behind that little strip where Dan Gilbert Insurance used to be. So the au auction house is what the project's called. Um, they're getting ready to put a sign up here, there, and the contact from Magnolia was getting in touch with me and Eric, and I'm like, well, because there's an issue, if you do a right turn lane, you have to have a taper area, and it gets into like the edge of the taper mm -hmm. area where the sign is, and so I think they're going to move forward with it, but I was just confirming that, yeah, right turn lane still is being required there. We don't have absolute on how, how big of the, how long the tape yeah. will be for it, but... Um, I would think that they would be effective. Oh, it's, it's, you know, they're effective. It's close, so... Um, You've got to have some length or it's not much value. Yeah. yeah the, only, the other thing is, you know, doing a right turn lane there, a dedicated right turn lane, it helps. Uh, the auction house project as well, because mm -hmm. that gets pressure off of the right turning lane and that that moving through better because how it's stacking back right now. And it's stacking back in these peak times. It's not all day long that it's stacking way back, but um, but it's a problem. I mean, you know, until so I-26 opens up and they start uh, increasing the length mm -hmm. of the um, signal duration is it's going to be a problem there. Do we know how many parking spots they've got planned for that? Or any more detail? Like, I mean, it yeah, doesn't look like there's they, enough they, they, I, I've there. heard that I, though, I think it's like 70 some or 80 some. Or it doesn't look like, like there could be that many in there, maybe. They, but it was, I want to say it was in that neighborhood. I, I don't remember the exact off the top of my head. And I, Find out. I'm afraid there's going to be a lot of people parking over behind <coughs> the C and walking, oh, yeah. dodging well, the traffic. Going I across. could see at peak times that yeah. that's going to happen, and they, if they haven't, knowing them, they probably have. I believe they have already started conversations with the joining property owners about that issue. But they they put quite a bit. There's quite a bit that's designed in yeah. there for parking. Um, I mean, it's following our land use regulations right. for it. It's, they share with you the restaurants that are going in there? Yeah. They, um, they did an article. There was an article yeah. in the... Avial Watchdog. Yeah, Asheville Watchdog. So, um, it's not Asheville, but at least somebody picked it up. Yeah, yeah there was an article. So, I think they talked um, about something. John Boyle had done it, had written the article. Oh, okay. and it was, gotcha. I'll share a copy. It was... A long article, it's really yeah, detailed. You sent it to us. It, I didn't do yeah, it. Yeah, okay. It's, it, it's uh, three restaurants. They had the names. It, it's an affiliation with the Food Hall Project in, in Greenville, which is very successful. It's a very nice one. Um, so there's some ownership association with that. Uh, it's, there'll be a like, wine bar restaurant in Urban and restaurant. It's not just a place to go and 
have wine here. There, there are three, there's supposed to be three restaurants. I can't remember the names of them off the top of my head right now, but I've got it in the article. And, it's okay. Yeah. And at the last the building, they weren't sure what was going in there. Um, so it's still to be determined. But they sound nice. I mean, it, it, um, I mean, nothing, nothing real upscale yeah. in there, but but still some, some like decent quality um, restaurant, sit down restaurant type deal. Or I think with some seating outside there as well. So, um, the switching subjects here the noise complaints on I 26 with the um, request for the sound walls. I, I think I mentioned last week DOT is doing a new sound study and they should have the results by June. Um, so that's hopefully that's going to come up and, and support the need. I don't see how it could. I don't see how it could either. I cannot see how it could. Yeah. And then last thing, our street resurfacing project, uh, they should be nearing completion on Hawks Nest and Sandpiper Cork over in South Chase. And then they started work. We did a change order with them to uh, get the same contractor to do the um, walking trail at Cates and Pete's Park. And um, that's well underway right now. It started last Thursday. So, um, I've been getting good comments from people on Hawks Nest. Appreciate us redoing their, their road. Yeah. I haven't heard of it yet, but um, I think so far it's going well. And I mean, I always think it looks so sharp when they oh, yeah. have a really resurfaced paved road in there. Um, and hopefully, we're a couple of years out right now as the study um, in our prioritization list, but doing uh, Woodhill all the way through. It's starting to get cracked, so we had some complaints. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're going to do a pothole repair. There was like a little pothole area further down. Oh, yeah, they're going to repair that as a change order under this resurfacing project for Hawks Nest and uh, Sam Hooker. So that'll be done. Uh, I just have one question. Council Member Reed asked me about the concert in the park. Is it going to be the same format as it was last year, one at Blue Ghost and one at I, uh, Bill I Moore. think right now they're both at, at the at Bill Moore Park. Okay. So they're the park right yeah, now. they're showing the park. So I don't think we're going to do um, either of them at Blue Ghost. I just thought that was the format we were going to do going forward. Yeah, one at Blue Ghost. That's and what one I thought park. too. But, okay. Well, I guess I would be totally up to Blue Ghost. Like if they wanted to book one, I'm sure Greg would be fine with that. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I thought Blue Ghost enjoyed it. Uh, I, I think it was worked out fine. Market. I think it's more alternative. Well, it seemed like there was more uh, interest or push to do it back at the park last year. But, um, yeah, we yeah. talked about one we at the did. park yeah. and one at the... Uh, I, I didn't know if it's because they made that huge amount of dirt that took away all their parking. Was that the I don't know. Maybe. That might... I, I'll, have to, I'll have to ask. For maybe that did. That's why I assumed, but I didn't I don't know. Just maybe I just assumed. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, let me let me check with him on that, and uh, if we can, and, you know, we can alternate the second one to yeah. Blue Ghost. If that's yeah, I thought that, that format worked well. Well, I think Flashback was at the park. Uh, I think they're scheduled at the same time that they were at the park last, last year, year. Yeah, and I'm sure they want to maintain that because I mentioned to them about Blue Ghost, and they said no, they'd much rather be yeah. at the park. They yeah. did not want but to. Blue Ghost needs, needs a stage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really, yeah. yeah, I mean, that was flashback. Yeah, it was um, flashback. That was yeah. some feedback from them. Okay. All right. That's all I had. Is there any other business from council? Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? Make a motion. We have a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of returning say aye. Aye. Those opposed?